Flight Simulator is awesome. At least I think so. And I'm always looking for ways to improve the experience and increase the level of immersion. And one thing that's been bugging me for a while is the autopilot. There's physical controls available for your yoke, throttle, and rudder pedals, but what about the autopilot? You're constantly adjusting it throughout the flight, and the only way to control it is with the mouse, and it can be pretty frustrating. And this is what sent me on the path of creating the physical autopilot you just saw in the intro. It's a generic layout that connects over USB, and it can work with any aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, as well as X-Plane 11. And you can make one of these too. Or if you like what you see, you can contact me about getting one of these for your home setup. Now there are available options for physical autopilot controls, but they're not that great, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Now here you can see me fumbling around with the autopilot using the standard mouse controls. You have to use the mouse wheel to turn the knobs, and as soon as your mouse strays off the knob, your camera zoom changes rather than the knob. And also this requires you to change your view. So instead of looking out the window and flying the aircraft, your head's down looking at the autopilot, and meanwhile you're losing situational awareness. Having a physical autopilot with real knobs and buttons to push would create a much more enjoyable experience. Now the Honeycomb Throttle Quadrant and the Logitech G Pro Flight Multi-Panel are two options that provide physical autopilot controls. But they both have their problems. Both of these devices only provide you with a single knob and a corresponding selector switch. This requires you to check the state of the selector switch before turning the knob or else you risk making an incorrect input. The Logitech Multi-Panel does have a display that shows the number changing as you're turning the knob, and the buttons light up to show the state of the autopilot, but the Honeycomb Throttle Quadrant doesn't even include these features. These devices are better than using the mouse, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. While searching for better options, I stumbled across a YouTube channel called Helimech, and he does amazing work, and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Now he's making a full home cockpit for a 737, which is way more than I want, but I wanted to know how he was getting his controls to talk to Flight Simulator. And this is how I discovered the Moby Flight software. It's a free program that talks between Flight Simulator and an Arduino, and it opens up unlimited possibilities for creating your own physical controls. You just configure the Arduino for your button layout, and then you tell Moby Flight what should happen when each of those buttons gets pressed. And this was the missing piece I was looking for. I now had everything I needed to design and build my own physical autopilot for Flight Simulator. The goal was to create a small, generic autopilot that could be used with any aircraft. I found LED displays on Amazon, knobs with detents, and push buttons with integrated LEDs. And of course, an Arduino Mega to control it all. So I went into Fusion 360 and began designing the autopilot. I included all the standard buttons for speed, heading, navigation, altitude, vertical speed, flight director, and of course the autopilot on-off switch. But most importantly, I included individual knobs and number displays for changing speed, heading, altitude, and vertical speed. The enclosure is 3D printed, the buttons just push into place, the LED displays glue in from the back, and the button labels are just printed into the front panel. Then it was time for 3D printing. Right here you can see my small 3D printer printing the front panel. Once all the parts showed up, the buttons, knobs, and displays, I was ready to begin assembling the autopilot. Then I wired the whole thing up by connecting the buttons to the Arduino in the back. The idea was to make quick, secure connections and not worry about how it looks, since it would be hidden inside the box. Then I bolted the front panel to the enclosure, and it was ready to go. Here's a look at the whole thing assembled, looking pretty awesome. With all the hardware complete, it was time to connect it to my computer, open up the Moby Flight program, and begin programming the device. This process just consists of configuring the Arduino for your button layout, and then telling the Moby Flight program what should happen when each button gets pressed. This process was a bit confusing at first, but with a bit of trial and error, I was able to get the autopilot behaving exactly as I needed it. And with the programming complete, it was time to connect it to Flight Simulator and take it for a spin. Alright, here it is. You can see it in action. I got my physical autopilot that I built on the bottom. I've got Flight Simulator on the top portion of the screen. You can see the primary flight display on the top left of the screen there. And you can see I'm changing the heading right now. And just like that, it follows the correct heading. But notice all I have to do is touch the physical controls and the virtual cockpit changes exactly how it should, so I don't have to constantly be looking down at the virtual autopilot in the game. Now during a normal flight, I would be looking straight ahead, not exactly at the autopilot. I just have the autopilot in the view here, so you can see 
things as I change it on the physical autopilot. But I got full control over altitude. We're climbing to 5,000 feet right now. And we're going to speed up here to 250 knots. Go into vertical speed mode here. Taking that to 2,600 feet per minute. Can even turn the flight director off as well as disconnect the autopilot. Hear the disconnect chirps and can turn the autopilot back on there. You can even adjust uh, in increments of 100 feet. And there you have it. That's how I created my own physical autopilot for Flight Simulator. And it's been a complete game changer. It's increased the level of immersion, decreased my reaction time, and made it a much more enjoyable experience. And while I only showed this working with the Fly-By-Wire A32NX, it could also work with any aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, as well as X-Plane 11. And while I'm pretty happy with it, I'll be continuing to make design improvements to it. And you can do this too. I'll leave a link to the Moby Flight software in the description. Or if you like what you see, let me know. I'll leave my contact information in the description, and you can contact me about how to get one of these autopilots for your home setup. And if you have any ideas about how I can make this better, let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I've even got some other ideas for physical controls I want to try in the future, like light switches and APU buttons. But for now, I'm pretty excited about this autopilot, and I can't wait to do more flights with it. Anyway, like I said, if this is something you're interested in, please reach out and let me know. And thanks for watching. Until next time, have a safe flight.